Thank you everyone for uh, being here this week at the CHEP seminar. Uh, we have uh, Xiao Shui Li here from the University of New Mexico. Uh, she is a uh, labor economist and public economist and dabbles in health economics as well. And today she's going to present some of her work on uh, quality information disclosure and health insurance demand, uh, as well as labor supply, looking at the effects of VA hospital report cards. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's really been a pleasant day, and I hope um, what comes next will disappoint you. I've talked to other guys sharing my uh, experience on the job market in grass school. I hope you'll find the output of my personal experience as I shared with you is not too disappointing. Um, so what I'm going to present today is a project that I've worked on for a little while. It's at a stage where I've re uh, obtained some interesting results. I've also um, it's acknowledged some limitations of the project. So I really appreciate comments, suggestions, and pointing out those limitations one more time, although I'll summarize them towards the end anyways. So a little bit of background information. Um, this project was motivated by the popularity of public report of quality information in the healthcare sector. The economic uh, motivation of having this information disclosure mechanism are that more information about quality facilitate consumer choices. And consumer choices, especially in a competitive market, would provide incentive for quality improving uh, activities to promote quality, essentially. Now, there has been a lot of research trying to evaluate the consequences of these quality report cards or mechanisms to provide quality information publicly available. Most of those discussions are primarily in the, in the private sectors. There has been a lot of research. Um, quality report cards target at providing information regarding insurance plans, but mostly insurance plans provided by public providers. These include different pro different plans provided by the single employer or different plans provided under the Medicare Advantage Care uh, gigantic program. But mostly all of those are um, insurance plans provided by private companies or healthcare providers. These include uh, quality report cards for cardio surgeons, quality report cards for nursing homes or health care services. So the general understanding of the current status of literature has been that our understanding of the consequences of health quality reports are primarily limited within the private sector. Recently, more and more uh, efforts have been initiated in the public health insurance sector, particularly in the context of Medicaid and CHIP. So the, as part of the Affordable Care Act, states are required to develop and report health care quality measures these include quality measures associated with patient satisfaction, associated with patient experience, but also measures associated with how the program is administered at the state level. So gigantically, they're referred to as the Medicaid Cheap Scorecard. Now, with this growing interest in providing the same set of information in the public insurance setting, there has been, I'm motivated by the thinking that uh, this Additional information provided in the public insurance setting may facilitate, may change the behavior of potential beneficiaries for a couple of style aspects. First of all, we do know that despite we do have some quality information at healthcare provider level, there has been sufficient evidence to indicate that even for the same healthcare provider, the quality care received by someone who is covered by private insurance plans <coughs> with differ from the quality of care received from the same provider for someone who is covered by public insurance, especially Medicaid. Medicaid. This issue is more severe in areas where the healthcare resources are more limited. I myself live in a state where the healthcare resources are pretty limited. When I first started at UNM, it took me literally three months to find a primary care provider who is also a nurse practitioner, not someone with an MD. Now that problem is more severe for those who is covered by uh, public insurance, which creates a lot of concern regarding is public insurance actually valuable to me? Especially for those who are living in poverty and knows that if I got hit by a car, I would be delivered to the emergency room, I won't be receiving excellent care, but I would be kept alive. So there is some 
noise is going on in terms of what is the actual value of public insurance for those who are potential beneficiaries. What's just on the on the literature on on a, a private health insurance mm -hmm. plan, sort of mm -hmm. uh, quality reports. Mm -hmm. On what dimensions of quality have those studies found that consumers have been most responsive? The uh, patient satisfaction. Okay, just a generic. A generic self-reported overall view of the, the uh, access to care as a whole. So not more uh, subjective measures. Got it. So no. So on and, and, and there's generally they find no effects on sort of the more objective kind of uh, uh, measures of quality. Um, it depends on what you mean by um, subjective measures. I, I, I guess I mean something sort of more, more about, say, the the the, the, the waiting time until sure. you receive treatment. Sure. Uh, the s s some some measure. Yeah, I mean some more concrete. Anyway, I'll stop. I'll stop. So I, that's a good question. That's something I put some thought in. Uh, here's my perception of. The, those studies, which may or may not be the most accurate description of uh, the underlying mechanism, it seems that it, the waiting time doesn't really have as much variation compared to some of those more uh, subjective measures in terms of patient satisfaction. I see. But I could be wrong over there. This is not something that has been extensively discussed in the papers that I have cited. Okay, so not objective measures, I guess I'm thinking of doctor quality, right. patient experience, those right. things. Okay. So, um, what I was trying to establish here is that despite we have sufficient information at provider's level, they may not be directly transferable to the knowledge of someone who is a potential beneficiary of public insurance. Moreover, it has long been a puzzle to public economists that the take-up rate of a lot of the free medical care provided by public insurance has been low. Recent estimates pre-ACA, we're talking about the uh, um, take-up rates among adults. Now, pre-ACA, we're talking about adults whose income are really low, therefore they should have a very difficult time seeking um, private health insurance elsewhere. Even for those, the take-up rate for Medicaid is pretty low. It's far from 100%, which well, 100% would be what standard economic theory would predict. So combining these two pieces of information, um, the motivation here is that we do know there is some quality concerns associated with public insurance. We do know that public insurance take up is far from perfect. So that creates some room for this additional information to play around, which is to say the public disclosure of quality information associated with public insurance, public insurance specific quality information may have some room to alter the behavior of those who are uh, potential beneficiaries and more importantly, the effects might be different from what people have already established in the private market for a couple of reasons. First of all, this, private, this public health insurance doesn't really have the quality promoting competition mechanism that people have been building upon in the discussion in private sector. Moreover, from a social worker discussion perspective, there's additional nuance associated with the behavior in the uh, public insurance context, especially because public insurance take up is associated with poverty and has its labor market implications. These labor market implications are going to be more relevant under the ACA expansion, which really uh, expands Medicaid and other exchange-based subsidies to a group of adults who, are, who have uh, a higher labor market attachment, essentially. So all of those facts motivate this study, which I really want to look at how the effect of quality information disclosure has um, the take-up decision of public insurance program. And specifically, I look at this big picture question in the context of the VA. I look at one wave of information, one initiative of quality information disclosure undertaken by the VA, which provides hospital-level quality report cards to veterans. I look at how this affects veterans' decision to take up the VA health care. Moreover, I'm also interested in learning a little bit more about the labor market implications associated with their behavior changes. And given the design of the program, given the design of the way that information are released, which I'll talk a little bit more later, 
I also want to shed some light on um, more specific questions in terms of the proper way to release quality information. I want to talk a little about how the behavior responses changes with respect to the change of the format on which information are provided, as well as looking at how the behavior responses changes in the long term versus in the short term. So, a little bit of background, uh, what I'm talking about here. The Veterans Affairs healthcare system is provided almost universally to, veteran, to the veteran population. The only eligibility requirement is that a veteran has to have served in active duty for at least 24 continuous months and separated under any condition other than dishonorable. That covers uh, more than 90% of the veteran population. And it differs slightly from the traditional type of health insurance in the regard that it only covers medical services through the VA facilities. Now this is going to be important for my research design because we're really talking about quality information at the facility level. And given that the VA doesn't really reimburse healthcare obtained from other outlets, it established a tight link between the quality of the program as a whole and the quality of the specific facility. So in terms of what are provided in the VA healthcare system, at the national level, the VA healthcare system consists of 21 networks that are divided geographically. Within each network, there are several layers of facilities to provide healthcare. At the most comprehensive, uh, services are provided at VA medical centers. There's typically one or two uh, VA medical centers within an MSA, and it provides more comprehensive set of care, primary care, specialty care, and inpatient care, not only. But these VA medical centers are located in more um, urban areas in most cases. For veterans located in rural areas, they could obtain daily <coughs> primary care, primarily from community-based clinics. But the scope of care provided at those clinics are going to be rather limited. In addition, there are also a set of VA-specific uh, providers, which provides uh, nursing facilities for disabled veterans, or uh, rehab centers that are associated with PTSD needs of veterans. So in this study, I'll be focusing primarily on the quality reports associated with VA medical centers, because that's what's released by the group. <coughs> Another side note that I want to put here is the pattern under which veterans utilize VA care. Recent survey <coughs> studies of veterans have revealed that um, but veterans tend to rely on the VA system for primary care, for the daily checkup, but in case they're in need of more comprehensive inpatient care, if they have alternative sources of financing their care, they'll go with the alternative sources. So if they have the option, they'll avoid using the inpatient care of the, from VA hospitals. That's sort of a pattern of healthcare utilization. So what, what, share, what do you know sort of descriptively about what share veterans are using on a regular basis, these different types of things? I do have a document that documents that. I don't have the number off the top of my head. Mm. Broadly? Mm. It's a little okay. not fresh memory, sorry. Yeah. So that pattern you were just talking about, um, if they had the means to go elsewhere to a more private setting, uh, do you find that that's because of the quality of VA, or is that possibly due to the wait list that some of them have to... Uh, Occur before they actually receive that treatment? I don't know that. So what I do know is a pretty straightforward description of the utilization of care. But I don't think um, the place where I received that information from the report actually tells us why. But that's a good question and I should look at it. So, also a little bit of discussion regarding why would this quality report card matter. We wouldn't anticipate a quality report card to make a huge difference if they're telling the veterans something they already know, which turns out to be not the case. There has been a long history of the public perception regarding the quality of VA healthcare system, and that perception hasn't really been very good. <coughs> it actually traditionally have had a, pure, a poor reputation for its quality. That poor reputation dates back to 1970s and 1980s, where a number of quality of care incidents occurred at VA hospitals. That really changes the public perception of the VA uh, facilities 
It is described as a bleak backwater of incompetence, indifference, and inefficiency. So this statement has been evidenced by um, the profile of the facilities in a lot of the movies. I'm listing one for it on 4th of July. For disclosure, I've never watched that movie, but I've seen it cited multiple times when people are talking about the hospital quality. Apparently, it's a horror story, <laughs> to some extent. So with this idea in mind, starting in the 1990s, the VA took a number of pretty substantial initiatives to improve the quality and efficiency of care delivered in the VA system. Uh, it was initiated by a major overhaul that was launched mid-1990s. And they really targeted at providing high quality care and to reorganize the system to make them more patient-centered. As a result of all these efforts, starting in early 2000, study has constantly found that um, the commonly used subjective measures of quality of care, the VA system actually performs more favorably than some of the non-VA uh, facilities. So we do see, subjectively, an increase in quality in the VA setting. However, that is not the perception of veterans. As of 2010, the National Survey of Veterans showed that only around 50% of veterans indicated that they agree or completely agree with the statement that veterans who use VA are satisfied with the health care they receive. So there really does seem to be a gap in terms of people's perception of the VA health care versus the actual quality of the VA health care. Here is a figure showing the share of veterans uh, in the CPS data that reported they're covered by the VA healthcare. I'm only looking at male veterans, uh, working age male veterans in this figure. We do see that first off, this figure tells us that the overall coverage is pretty low. Despite that, veterans are universally eligible for VA and there really isn't, there is only at most a minimum cost of enrolling in, in VA in terms of monitoring costs. A couple of additional notes about this figure that I want to point out. We do see this jump in 2009. Uh, the jump starts in 2010, but that corresponds to um, data in 2009 because of the lag in CPS design. That is because back in 2003, due to the budgetary concerns of the VA healthcare system, veterans of priority group eight which are those who are of higher income, relatively higher income, and no, better, no service connected disabilities, are temporarily suspended from enrolling in the VA system if they haven't enrolled yet. That restriction was removed in 2009, which is why we see this increase in the um, coverage rate report. Yes? How do those trends look with any coverage or like private coverage? I'm sorry? Like any coverage, like over that time, like how they look and how high is the take up for any coverage or private coverage as compared to like we see just for the um, VA? I see. Um, that's a good question. I don't have that figure right now, but uh, I had that figure in an earlier project. We do see a slight decline in private coverage. Can I see a question over there? Okay. Yeah. This might be slightly in the weeds, but I was just wondering because different health surveys they tend to um, kind of have different rates of accuracy on their insurance questions. Do you know in the CPS if there tends to be kind of underreporting of VA relative to other public coverage? Or? That's a really good question. So I have cross checked this coverage data with the National Survey of Veterans, which is not conducted every year but conducted in 2001. And 2010. So compare the numbers in CPS with the average number reported in the National Survey of Veterans, they're roughly within the same range. Uh, the other note is that starting in 2014, the CPS changed their design of question regarding health insurance. So I'm not making any distinctions here, but I'll show later my results are robust to the ex exclusion of those changes. So, in terms of the quality report cards, because of all these concerns about the gap between the actual quality and public <coughs> perception of the system, back in 2007, uh, 
the House Appropriations Committee requested the VA to disclose information about the quality of care. In June 2008, the VA released the first ever quality report cards at the facility level. In later years, similar quality report cards were released, and the whole system was merged with the hospital compare in 2014, although there has been some recent issues uh, in which they took the information out of the hospital computer website. So in terms of what quality measure are reported in those report cards? In those report cards, the overall quality for inpatient care and outpatient care were produced by constructing these composite scores. The way that these composite scores are constructed are that they're procedure measures, which is to say the VA tracks down uh, relevant patients who have the relevant condition and follow the procedural choices. These composite scores are obtained by summing up all incidences of eligible patients as denominators and summing up all incidences where the indicated procedure was delivered, which is going to be the numerator. Uh, this calculation will give us a ratio, and that ratio is multiplied by 100 to give us a score. A higher score indicates more required procedures are delivered for relevant patients and are presented in the, the hospital report cards as the overall quality. So that's the name they use for it. Yeah. So is, is somebody else making a judgment on whether these patients should have been delivered a particular uh, procedure for their care, or is this sort of c conditional on the procedure being uh, required, sort of, of whether they got it or time until they got it or, or, or something? Or is there someone else making a judgment on whether the, the procedure was never recommended for the patient? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that question, but um, like I've attached towards the end of the paper, you take a look at the type of procedures that are included. Um, so I would anticipate the answer to that question to vary based on the type of procedure we're talking about. It's the very end as the end steps. So along those lines, just to make sure I'm understanding, so if your, your procedures are like, I don't know, uh, heart attack, like open heart surgery or something like that, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. So I mean, you're, <clears throat> if I'm reading this right, you're not measuring quality, you're just measuring like treatment intensity. Right? Exactly. So my story here is, despite the fact that we don't know if this is a precise measure of quality, <laughs> but they're presented to veterans as the overall quality of the facility, and it's the information that matters. I'm curious if you, so along those lines, do you actually have an example of like what a veteran would see with this report? Like what, it, what is it, like is it email that goes out or the mm -hmm. flyers? And, and, and they just say, like, our score is X, um, and here's how it compares to, like, is that, is that kind of the, the information shock that you're looking yes, at? Yes, I was talking to Joe about this. Okay. So this is one of the largest limitations of this version of the paper, which is I don't have a um, very straight answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I don't have first order effect evidence suggesting that here is the way that information is delivered. Here's what I do know. I do know that this information is made available online, and um, I do know some hospitals do uh, work on some uh, disclosure efforts to spread the information, but we, we are concerned that it's the good hospitals who are doing that. Sure. Um, I also know that the veterans self-report using the internet to search for VA-related information. Mm -hmm. So those are the pieces that I do know at this point. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. That, that is one of the major limitations of this version. Okay. And the other question I have is, is it given that this is kind of a very rudimentary score of quality, does this allow you to construct what the quality score would have been prior to the information disclosure? Like, no. Oh, these, these aren't data that you have. Mm -hmm. These aren't data that I have. Okay. So you can't backfill and say, had the, the disclosure occurred two years before, here's what the score would have been. No. Okay. Uh, but as a side note, um, the, two, the 2008 quality scores, which is the first year they, that they got released, they construct the quality scores based on patient information back in 2006 and 2007. Oh, okay. So, they, so that there's no like 
you can't juke the stats on the first year that right. it comes out. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So something weird about the system is that in 2008, composite scores are constructed for inpatient care and outpatient care respectively. But in subsequent years, more details are included in those composite scores. So instead of saying this is the overall quality of the inpatient care of this facility, they break down those composite scores into four separate composite scores corresponding to four subcategories that are included in constructing the composite score in the first place. So I, I still, I'm struggling again about the, the interpretation of what the composite score is, 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 is measuring and how much it's measuring. It's quite saying sort of quality versus sort of demand side sh shocks that, that, are, that, are, that, that are happening in mm -hmm. these locations. So I, I, it's difficult to sort of know how to, how to, how to, how to think about mm -hmm. what that you know, cross MSA variation uh, that you're using to, to identify, in, in part, these quality effects is, mm -hmm. is picking up. I'm just, I mean, it's not your problem. You didn't generate the, qu the quality <laughs> measures. Your pro it's your problem for interpretation about what the, about what the composite score means and mm -hmm. what it's reflecting and whether we should in interpret it as infor information or, or not yeah, or something I have, else. I have, so, just in case we don't get to the results, which often happens with presentations. <laughs> uh, so your your like if I'm looking at your like baseline model, your sort of treatment is this 2008 information disclosure. So my problem with the quality measure and using that as your sort of your policy shock is that that also corresponded to a significant unwinding of U.S. troop deployments uh -huh. in the Middle East uh -huh. at the same time. Uh -huh. So if you've got people coming back from combat service. Presumably, some of them will be either directly injured or like. Sure. I guess this measure is a is a sort of healthcare treatment measure. Uh -huh. If you've got people coming back from like active combat zones, like yeah, <laughs> this is good. Like you've got like an increase in the quality measure that's corresponding to just people coming back and needing more procedures. So it's not really like a like you've got confounding effects sure. where your quality measure and your sort of your information channel are really being driven by the same thing potentially unwinding troop deployment in the middle east at the same time your so-called information policy shock is happening so there are two analyses that i've done sort of relates to these um come come back veterans coming back from from afghanistan essentially i've looked at how these quality measures correlate with the share of veterans who've served in Afghanistan eras, and I don't see a strong correlation. The other thing I've done later is that I've added controls for the state level veteran compensation in terms of um, older veterans who would be in need of more health care, and I see my results are robust. I understand those are not direct answers. So you mean to ex yeah. like, oh, like limiting your uh, analysis to older veterans? Mm -hmm. you, your, your results are robust? Yes. I've done that, although not so in the paper. Like excluding younger people. I've focused on older people simply <laughs> and find my result to be robust. I've also included state level share of older veterans and the share of total veterans. My results are robust. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, th there's still the issue with the quality measure, though. That, sure. that like, there's not, I'm not entirely convinced that the information shock is actually an information shock. Okay. Because your quality measure would still be reflecting the younger people that are coming back from deployments, potentially. So I'll show you the time trends later on. Like I said, these quality measures are constructed based on the uh, actual patient services received back in 2006. So if it's the uh -huh. treatment intensity that's going on, we would see the uh, effect to start back in 2006, which is not the case. <coughs> So I, my thoughts on terms of kind of the pushback here is that it, on, on the one hand, maybe it like, you know, maybe this kind of the information disclosure and the quality measure, even if it's not what we would think of as a compelling quality score, if it's something that they can just say, oh, we, we scored 97, like no one knows what that index means, but if that's, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, shock or effect, it, it allows VA hospitals to rank comparably to mm -hmm. local cares on some dimension, yeah. even if it's not super informative what it is, yeah. then maybe that's all the information 
yeah, I mean, maybe that could be the information shock, even though it's, you know, the meaning isn't quite there. But it's like, you drive by hospitals all the time, they hang these banners, ranks, you know, number three in like whatever list of hospitals. I don't know what that list of hospitals is. Yeah. So does the VA site sort of put sort of do they do a distribution say you know, score you know 90, 90 or 100 high quality yeah. sort of VA facility do they we, do that we are comparable to non VA hospitals on this following time. but in terms of these sort of rankings when when a when a veteran wants to look up and see how good my facility is uh, it can you can do, do they provide does the, the VA website you know actually explicitly say scores in this range is a high quality you know a great hospital. Does it say that? Yes, as of now that I checked, but uh, I couldn't find a way to figure out the same information back in 2008, which is a problem. Yeah. Has this composite type score ever been used for, say, like private yes. hospitals? And does people look to see if it correlates well with more things we think are more objective yeah. qualities or measures of quality? These are quality measures used commonly used in the private sector. For outpatient care, we're looking at the Hades, which is used for uh, by more than 90% of health plans as a measure of performance. <coughs> so, consistent with what Joe was suggesting, we do have the VA does have these uh, flyers saying that we're comparable or even performing better compared to non-VA facilities. So here are the uh, categories that are presented in later years. So you can see here, in 2008, they say this is the overall quality of our outpatient care. In 2009, they say this is the quality for diabetes. Yeah. For diabetes-related treatment. So there is a difference in the way that information is presented. With regard to inpatient care, it's also using some commonly used measures in the private sector. And we have, again, a list of subcategories that are less transparent in terms of what they mean. Do you have, how much variation is there across sort of the ratings at a, at a given facility? Across for the different types of categories of conditions? Can you, are, are there, what I'm getting at is if you have sort of a high rating in tr treating tobacco related mm -hmm. illness, do, can that, do, do you see lots of instances where that same facility has a low rating on treating acute myo myocardial infarction? So the answer is yes, I do see some instances where a facility ranks really high on one of those measures and really low on some of the other measures. I'll show you the correlation matrix later on, but uh, by visualizing the data, yes. That's interesting. That's... Alright, so here's the distribution of the quality scores in 2008, sort of the variation that we're realizing. So as you can see here, there really is some variation going on at the facility level. And this is going to be the variation that I'll be utilizing. So um, uh, we're going to go through the data. I'm assuming, yeah. yeah. So I have a quick question. Now, that we're, since we're looking at kind of the distribution of these quality scores, um, I think the, so the data you're using later on is at the MSA level. Mm -hmm. Have you looked to see kind of what the, the distribution of quality scores looks like across places that might have kind of more competition for healthcare versus less? So in places that in MSAs that maybe just have one other hospital versus the places that have lots of other hospitals, um, you know, you could you could imagine that. I mean, you could tell a story about. Yeah, that's a power. very good point. Uh, um, I have not included a measure for the level of competition at private market, but in one of my robustness checks, I have included state level uh, per capita healthcare expenditure and state level per capita healthcare expenditure paid by private providers paid by private insurance to proxy for the market condition on the uh, private insurance side. I wonder, because if you could get, um, I mean, if you could get the, I don't know if, if it'd be easy to get, but to figure out kind of how many comparable sort medical of centers and are access in to a care market, measure. then I think, you know, you could, you could get into lots of interesting questions in terms of kind of differential responses mm -hmm. to information shocks, right? Information may be much more valuable in a, in a setting where you know, there are lots of alternatives, right, to, to the VA, um, versus if the VA is kind of the only game in town, well, then I'm going to go there anyway. Um, right. And that would be the first order effect, and then the second order effect would be, you know, if these are comparable metrics that are being used, you might see more incentive to improve on these metrics over time in the more competitive areas mm. than the less competitive areas. No, so that's absolutely a really good question. Um, I've not done that, but like I said, I've tried to uh, 
exam for a similar story by looking at the resources available at state level from the private insurance market. I've also so I've tried to exploit the heterogeneous effect to see if areas with more healthcare resources from private market has a larger or smaller effect. Mm -hmm. I don't really see a difference. Mm -hmm. And part of that could be I only have, like, I'll show you in the next slide, I only have a, a hundred and nine MSAs, so when, when I cut the sample further, there really is much variation going on. Is there, is there much variation in the number of VA facilities over the period that you're looking at? Uh, what do you mean by variation in the number? In the VA, in, in, in the VA hospital, are, are, are there changes? Are new ones opened during the, during the period? Some closed down? Or yeah, that's a good point. So there are a few that opened after 2008. I have excluded them from my analysis. I should probably start. Look at how that changes the story. So in this data, I'm using the March supplements to the CPS, which provides more valuable information. It provides valuable information regarding health insurance coverage. Um, I've obtained demographic characteristics, health insurance coverage status, labor market outcomes, and I'm using relying on MSA of residents to match with VA facilities. In this sample, I make a number of restrictions. So first of all, I'm focusing only on male veterans for two reasons. A, um, it is pretty common for veterans to be married to different veterans. So when it comes to pulling together male and female, it might involve some additional considerations regarding within household labor supply decision and choices for health insurance. I'm also exclude. Oh, the other rationale for that is over the same study period, there has been a national push to attract more female veterans to the VA system by Doing some, by uh, promoting some outreach efforts in terms of telling female veterans that you would receive the needed care at VA facilities. So to avoid that being a compounding factor and excluding female. Yes, please. So, so did you have male veterans but who were maybe in households both, again, male veterans who were married to female veterans and male veterans who were married to female civilians? Is that? Yeah. Okay. And you don't make any, there's no distinction there? Right. Okay. And I'm excluding those with a college degree. The motivation for that is the temporary suspension of high income veterans to uh, newly enroll in the VA system during the study period and to get rid of that jump in 2009, which happened at the same time. In, sorry, about that. When you exclude those with a college degree, at what share of the, of the veteran sample in this age group has that? I don't you? know off the top of my head. Okay. But I can tell you that, not in the paper, the results are primarily driven by the low educated. Okay. So I also do the matching process, which further eliminates some of the observations. Of all 153 VA medical centers, 13 are consolidated with parent facilities, so they report one score. And I've also excluded facilities that did not offer uh, accurate care services, therefore they don't have a college score for the out, uh, inpatient care. And some facilities are in an are not in an MSA or in an MSA that is not coded in CPS by the end of the day. I have 104 facilities that were successfully matched with observations in the CPS based on this MSA level matching process. Now that gives us our summary. So it's, I'm assuming that everybody has read this, but uh, this is a standard deep in deep. Um, Research design in which I seek to identify the effect of quality information disclosure um, uh, being relevant. The challenges are that there could be some additional channels aside from the public reporting of information where the veteran may have established some understanding of the quality of care prior to the release. This is going to be problematic because we anticipate there to be a systematic correlation between the level of knowledge that I know and to what extent we are utilized via healthcare. Um, the solution to that problem is to uh, pick up this deep in deep type design where I use pre disclosure data as the baseline. And the other note is that the release of information coincides with the Great Recession and throwing a bunch of state level controls, uh, MSA and year state fixed effects, and unemployment. Yeah. 
Would it be possible to check with the state by your effect, or would that limit you too much since you only have maybe twice the number? I think it'll be possible. I have not tried. Is there any specific concerns we have? Well, if you wanted to the time bearing, say the whole the ground time of Great Recession and maybe you know, when the economy that could that could pick it up versus just a, a state fixed effect. Presumably you're at your you lose is if there are 104 facilities on average, that's two per basically state, two per yeah. state, and I presume that not all states have two. That's true. Yeah, so you would definitely lose a Yeah, so you might be actually identifying off of, I don't know what the systematic relationship is between VAs and the state, but yeah. you might have a weird selected subsample. Yeah. So I know I'm a little bit behind schedule, very quickly go through the identification. It's a pretty standard, leaving the type specification where the outcome of interest, outcome of interest is regressed against post-treatment indicator, the treatment intensity indicator, which is the score reported in 2008, a bunch of individual level demographic characteristics, a bunch of fixed effects, and the coefficient of interest is that of the interaction term, which measures the effect of the information disclosure on veterans living close to high quality facilities relative to their counterparts living close to low quality hospitals. As the standard approach for diffing diff design has separately present summer statistics before after high quality versus low quality. In this figure, I'm defining high quality as the medium outpatient care score, as the score is about the medium of the outpatient care score. So there really is a too much story going on. In most cases, the demographics are very similar. The only notable difference that I want to point out is that the share of veterans who have any college is higher in near low quality facilities, but that difference seems to be persist both before and after uh, the disclosure. Is that sorry? Just one more question: Is the composite score is it a weighted average of the individual yes. scores yes. associated with each of the different uh, categories? It is. Yes. So, it, so it's and they're not given equal weight, or they they're not they, given equal they're weight. They're weighted by weight. what? They're weighted by the. Um, number of incidences. So say diabetes versus heart attack. If you have more patients with diabetes, diabetes will be way more. Which also prevents me from using the later information to construct the exact same composite score. So graphic illustration, I follow the standard approach in the literature by looking at some sort of very similar to an event study framework, but slightly different since we don't have a dummy. Uh, treatment indicator. So here's how this look like when we're looking at outpatient score. Pre-policy, we'll be looking for any existing knowledge about the quality of care. We do see there is a some sort of positive correlation. High quality facilities have a higher coverage rate on average. But we do see, although noisy, we do see an increase in the correlation, but not exact correlation, but regression adjusted correlation between the coverage rate and the composite score. I should also note that I have standardized all the composite scores, so this shall be uh, read as the effect of a standard deviation increase. So what's the confidence interval? I don't have the confidence intervals here. Um, Are they significant from zero? They are not significantly different from zero at 5% level. But notably, I don't have that many data, and I'm literally running them by year. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just uh, uh, yeah, had a thought. Um, so it, it seems to me that, and this is kind of what was in my mind for your motivation, is that there are kind of these two different channels in which this information disclosure could be um, leading to increases in, uh, in VA enrollment. Right? One is just the information shock, as you yeah. said, and kind of motivated saying, look, veterans don't know how good the care really is, or at least the perception doesn't match kind of this reality. Mm -hmm. So now we're telling veterans it is actually comparable to the private sector quality, so there's kind of this initial shift over. But the second channel, which I don't think you've talked about as much about, is, is now the incentive <coughs> for VAs to improve along right. these dimensions to get those scores up. And that that then, in, in this knowing, if you know that the, if you observe improvement in the, the VA over this time, right, that then could also incentivize you to go. It's not so much that, oh, now I know where it is relative to everything, because now I know it's getting better. Yeah, I have that listed as my limitation. Okay. 
But I wonder if by doing this, in this event study framework, you might actually be in some way understating the potential combined effect. And by that I mean you have this, this outpatient 2008 you know, score. Mm -hmm. right? And so what you're picking up here is just kind of the, you know, there's this information shock from, you know, oh, I, this is you know, better than I thought, you know, whatever. And but you're kind of shutting down this, chan this improvement channel. Right, because you're not looking at how these scores are improving over time, and so you're not kind of capturing the people who might be switching in to because it's improving over time. So kind of the total effect might actually be underestimated in these leads and lags that you're you're positing here, right? Because uh -huh. you might be getting some improvement from the lower end of mm -hmm. distribution of the hospitals, which is going to then attenuate. This, these coefficients, because you're saying how much more are we getting right. enrollment from high school and hospitals. Right. And I don't know if there's a way that you could think about, um, you know, looking at kind of catch-up rates or, I mean, I, I like I like the 2008 score because it's it's measured by stuff that happened before the disclosure. Um, but there's this other side that I think would be interesting and, and, and might be kind of pulling back some of your findings a little bit. I don't know if you could, there's a, I, I don't have a quite a, I haven't wrapped my head around a great way to get at it mm -hmm. right now, but it might be something worth thinking about. Well, you have hospital level quality scores moving forward, don't you? Yes. I mean, you could look at like the simple difference. I, I'll and, show you what, what I find. Okay. So, um, a side note on that, I have thought about this catch up effect, mm -hmm. which may indicate things are going to have different differential impacts on the low end of the distribution versus high end of the distribution. I played around with the data to see if I could somehow capture that, but again, I run into the issue, I run into the power issue. In right, 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 right. Yeah. But I agree with you on that. So, this is what's going on if you look at inpatient score, there really isn't much going on except for uh, the noise. So regression adjusted, this is what those figures translate into. Um, when I throw everything in, a one standard deviation increase in the reported outpatient quality scores increases the coverage rate by a significant 1.33% take point, yes. And I, I really have to ask, are, columns, are models two and three like that numerically identical, I'm, ske I'm very skeptical because you include the state unemployment rate, which is, should be a pretty strong measure for VA, uh, I guess, substitutability between private insurance and public insurance, I agree, right? But like, is the unemployment rate right? Like, so this is like you didn't just accidentally cut, cut and paste one column into another and then forgot to update it later. Um, it just seems so implausible that they're like effectively numerically identical to that degree of accuracy. I'll double check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I checked that before because I had the same question. And I'm not saying that, of course it's possible, but yeah. that effectively means though that like the, there's next to zero power in well, state unemployment. Yeah, I mean, this is a broader question about, do you know something that you can tell us and maybe you want to see in the next version unless I've missed it, is, is <laughs> describe to me the geographic variation across this composite score. Show me where the higher scores are and the lower scores are in 2008 to give me a sense of whether it could be related because if for some reason it seemed unrelated to the un unemployment rate then it wouldn't be as shocked. But mm -hmm. it'd be useful to mm -hmm. know like where where yeah. where it's coming. That's where, a really good <laughs> Yeah, and Thank I mean, you. so the state unemployment rate I think arguably is the, I would say the, I mean, you agree because you put it up there in a, a bunch of controls, but the, it's the most important uh, sort of variation remaining, right? Because right. you've got like state fixed effects, you've got mm -hmm. time fixed effects, but you don't have this sort of time varying heterogeneous, heterogeneous effects that are captured by mm -hmm. the unemployment rate mm -hmm. that seem like would have a very, very important impact on your outcome variable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you get all this because you include it, but I'm just so surprised that it would not no, I was would not load in the model at all. I, I'm pretty sure I checked, but okay. uh, let me check one more time. Just. But uh, um, consistent with the figure, we don't see anything going on with the uh, inpatient figure. So about the robustness checks, I've mentioned some of these early on. One thing that I do want to note here is in addition to the state 
fixed effects, uh, in, in addition to the state MSA fixed effects and uh, state level unemployment rate, I've also tried to include MSA specific time trends. The underlying assumption will be there could be something else going on that very at MSA level, and state level unemployment rate may not be a good proxy for local labor market conditions at the MSA level. So what I end up with is a coefficient that is in magnitudes similar to the baseline, but not statistically significant at the 10% level. Uh, I know it's wrong to nine, but it is statistically significant at 15% level, and I've added a bunch of linear time trends, which washes out a lot of the power. So I want to be very honest there. This is what I find. I've tried to add uh, the value compensation. We've talked about that. Private market medical expenditures, really nothing much going on here. And I've tried to exclude 2009, which is the first year that um, this information was released. I've also excluded post-ACA to get rid of the ACA effect and to get rid of the fact that CPS has changed the way it designs health insurance questions. These are excluding data years in 2014 and 2015. Um, the other thing that I should have noted earlier is that there are six, I don't recall the exact number, but six or something, number of MSAs that has more than one VA facility. In the baseline model, I have used the average score but I've changed it to the max score with the perception that people may go to the better quality hospital. It doesn't really change my result much, yes. When was the second round of scores released? It's 2009. Oh, right after. Okay. Yeah, so right after. they made you want to see what happens only after the initial score release to kind of get rid of the concern for the, the comment about catching up versus... Um, you don't think they have time to catch up Right. Just yeah. Or yeah, you know, the first year or two to kind of account for that. So the other thing is that um, we do have some general understanding that the overall take-up rates of VA benefits has been increasing over the past decade or so. So as a placebo test, I also looked at the, inform the other information that CPS provides, which is whether or not someone receives any monitor payments from the VA. Those include um, disability compensation, include pension, and include educational payments. Um, using that as an outcome variable, I don't see any effects. I'm also not seeing any effects on the specific payments related to disability, which is more health related. So my reading into it is that what I find in baseline is unlikely driven by some overall increase in the likelihood of, of claiming VA benefits as a whole. Now, what we've been doing before reading too much into it, what we've, I've shown you is that after the information disclosure, veterans living close to high quality facilities increased VA enrollment relative to their counterparts living close to low quality facilities. There is some additional considerations as to what's going on and what are the implications of those and there are new information going on and how do we incorporate those new information in their decision making process. So I think to answer a couple of those additional questions or at least provide some insights to help us understand the answer to those questions. First of all, the labor supply responses. Is there any uh, associated labor supply responses? And when the information is updated, do veterans further update their um, behaviors? Now, this differs slightly from the choices to enroll in private health insurance, because we do know that to enroll in private health insurance, we need to do an annual update, which is not the case in the VA. Once you're in the VA system, you essentially can stay in the VA system forever. So there really isn't, um, it's really slightly different from our standard mindset that things should be updated on an annual basis. So first of all, labor supply aspect. I've tried to look at different measures for labor supply, labor force participation, employed, being a part-time worker, condition on being employed. Um, I've looked at food sample and older batteries only. Across the board, I'm not seeing much of a labor supply response, which may be because despite that, the additional provision of housing insurance reduces the incentive to participate in the labor market. There could be an additional health effect later, which is if I know that I have access to quality health care, I may consider myself more healthy. 
and be more willing to participate in the labor market. Therefore, I also look at to additional measures for self-reported health and health status. I'm not seeing much going that. So across board, my reading into it is, despite the pretty sizable effect in terms of taking up VA coverage, I'm not finding any labor market response or self-reported health response associated with that. Do you have a question? That would be consistent with the uh, research on the ACA Medicaid expansion of two, right? Mm -hmm. Changes in Medicaid mm -hmm. coverage, but really more part-time employment. Yeah. We looked at like non-VA uh, data that like private hospitals or other public hospitals are more private to see if like maybe there's a crowd out effect happening. I did. They're not presenting in paper, but I did look at private insurance coverage and coverage through Medicaid Medicare. I'm not seeing much of a change there either. Alright, now here's the information update that I know you guys are waiting for. So first of all, in order to think about information updating, we need to first establish that there is new information. Now this correlation matrix demonstrates how the outpatient care score presented in 2008 is correlated with the four subcategory scores reported in later years. Now what is shown here demonstrates that First of all, there is some positive correlation, but the positive correlation is not as strong as I had anticipated before looking at data. When I look at specific <coughs> values of some of those measures, there are a couple of explanations <coughs> for this. First of all, as Joe was asking, it's not uncommon a case that some facilities perform really well on some of those measures, but suck at others. Also, there, this, uh, this correlation matrix could indicate that some of the quality improvement efforts has been taking place, therefore the underlying quality does change over time. The information that I had cannot uh, allow me to differentiate those two mechanisms. Nevertheless, I did go ahead and see if this additional information may lead to any additional changes to better behavior, particularly in their choices to take up the VA. And here's the specification I I'm regressing the outcome of interest on the score in 2008 and concurrent score. I'm arguing that the score in 2008 roughly captures the effect of base information, while the coefficient of concurrent scores roughly tells us the effect of updating information. To facilitate this analysis, I have to restrict my sample to years where the cultural report card does exist, the 2008 forward. Therefore, I want to be very careful here. I'm not uh, promoting a causal interpretation of it, but just some correlation exercise to help us start thinking about the information updating process. What's your question? This is what I have. Can you, I'm sorry, before, can, can you tell me something about how much variation sort of you're observing over time? I mean, something about the correlation matrix is, is, mm -hmm. is helping, but again, do you have any sort of sense where the uh, changes in scores are, 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 the, are the biggest, and in what direction, how many are going up, how many are going down, how is that related to the base score to get yeah, at explicitly the question? Yeah, that's a good question. question. I don't have an answer off the top of my head, but um, I definitely should check. Well, should really if, if one kind of correlation makes it, matrix that might be informed, it would be the 2008 score on the change from over 2009 to 2013, yeah, rather than the, really the level point. effect, you know? Um, and that would tell that would be a better way to see if lower scores led to a larger yeah. increase relative to higher scores. Right. Alright. So this is what I find. I've tried to construct the average of those four concurrent scores, put them separately, put only the concurrent score, and put only the separately concurrent score. Across board, what I'm finding is only the information in 2008 matters. All the new information doesn't seem to have a strong correlation with the actual take-up decision of veterans. I'm sorry, this might be me, and I apologize if it is, but can you, can you, can you again describe what the TOB concurrent is relative to the IH? Tobacco. So these tobacco. are... Okay, tobacco, got it, fine. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, Diabetes, preventive, preventive. Um, tobacco, and I believe this is part of it. Got it. So the four subcategories, yes, please. Okay, um, so I'm trying to think about this from kind of like a learning perspective. Yeah. So 
The only way this makes sense to me is if pre-2008, people have totally diffuse priors about quality. Like, okay. they know nothing. They're completely okay. ignorant. And so then this information shock leads to a very large update yeah. in their posterior, right? And then any additional information on the quality gets you, like, they don't respond to that at all. Like, so the only, like, if they have some information pre-2008, then they're up, they're, they're posterior with the 2008 information is only gonna be sort of marginally bigger than their 2008 to 2009, 2009 to 2010, et cetera. So I mean, these results are consistent with one of two things. The identification isn't as sharp as you'd like it to be, and so you're picking up some other kind of like something else. Or people just were like, had no clue at all about any quality measure whatsoever. And I, I don't find that to be the, the most compelling explanation. Okay. So yeah. So I'm a little bit curious um, from the previous table. Like even when you so when you take out that outpatient 2008, my guess like I would have put money that then the, that average concurrent would have loaded and kind of picked up at least um, a lot of that outpatient. And I guess it makes me think that I, I don't fully understand the specification here. So are you looking only at the post period years? Okay. So the, the whole diff and diff thing is kind of yeah. like the way that we're just looking at yeah. explaining yeah. uptake over this period. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So these are just, and, and so you, the identification on the outpatient is just a cross-sectional, yeah. a pure sort of cross-sectional right. difference yeah. across right. the MSA. Okay. It's not interactive with anything. So yeah. that, could be, yeah. Yeah. that could be picking up. There, but there are no fixed effects here. No. Yeah. Okay. I see. So this is just just across. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. I see. But I guess, so this is the, this is the thing that I just have a hard time with because if the information channel is like the active mechanism here, then yeah. I would expect to see if there's continual information flowing through that channel, mm -hmm. that that mechanism should still hold. And mm -hmm. this suggests to me that that's not the case. Are there only seeing data that's they're not seeing the improvements right facility but again in order for that to work there'd have to be some sort of like like the information channel would have to be like a fire hose where they can't avoid but like you know receive that signal yeah i get i get emails from all the time about how good their quality care is is that true yeah but, but, if you get all that, but, that's, but that's just it, right? Because yeah. if it's if you're getting constant emails, but it's, it's not bad. Too. It's just it, it, like whenever they talk about it, they'll just say things like it's you know comparable or possibly better than. But that's but that's my point. Is if it's this constant thing, and it's and there's not really any specifics except that hey, VA is good, VA is good, VA is good. Then you're getting the same information signal kind of constantly, and so you right. expect to see this sort of mechanism operating across the entire time series. What about have you looked at heterogeneous effect? You know, if you if we you know conditional, we think this is an mm -hmm. we believe this is an information shock about who sort of heterogeneous impacts. Oh, mm -hmm. are we seeing the biggest effects among those who we might most think should benefit from getting the information shock? I'm sorry. I should be sorry. Should, uh, are you seeing if you're going to interpret this as sort of the effect of this information shock? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing it on demographically on, on, right. on populations of veterans that you expect the biggest gains to, to come from? And I'm not sure whether that's those so who are most likely to I've do the made search some attempts or those with less the, prior information. The problem with right. that is it really depends on who lacks the prior information. If I'm to right. Um, Establish an information channel story, right. and the ability to obtain information is also systematically correlated with the needs for healthcare. Mm -hmm. So, any information channel explanation to motivate substance analysis are going to be confounded by the needs for healthcare. I, I guess I'd be curious to know which you're driving it anyway, and then think about what the interpretation would be if it's younger veterans, older veterans. Uh, more highly educated. So it's so not, more educated, okay. older, uh -huh. and I don't see a difference based on marital status. Got it. Yeah. So one idea, back to the, the table we were just looking at. Um, now that I realize it's it's a, a pooled data set, I mm -hmm. realize the way I was thinking about these different coefficients is, is kind of, is, is, um, isn't quite right. And I wonder if 
you could, if, if maybe one, just a useful way to look at this would be either like a, through like a first difference or a long difference like over this, this period. Um, and because and, what you have here is, is the levels, you have kind of the levels on levels, right? Yeah. And if, if, if this is kind of, if we're thinking about kind of the, the improvement channel, mm -hmm. yeah. we really want kind of changes on changes, yeah. right? And that would be kind of the perfect thing for a, a first difference or a long difference. Um, and again, like, as, as you were very clear about, it would be correlations, but, um, but it, it might be, I, I think I would have an easier time interpreting that than interpreting these. Yeah, that's very good point. Thank you. So, apparently it's not as polished, but uh, my current interpretation into the pattern is still we do have possible mechanism going on. I lack the needed information to really tell me which mechanism is the case. It could be that the format of information really matters, which is in the first year they tell you this is overall quality of outpatient care versus inpatient care, but in later years, we're talk reading something about diabetes for someone who's not a diabetic patient, they may not pay attention to that information. Alternatively, it could be exactly what you guys were suggesting, which is the first wave of information it really makes a huge difference, and people just follow along with that. But at this stage, I'm not having any additional ways of uh, differentiating the two and by reading the literature is that there has been some literature suggesting that in other different contexts both mechanisms are possible. There has been literature suggesting that composite scores are what really matters, what people don't understand. There has been literature suggesting that information updating is not very frequent. So, right on that. In terms of the summary findings, I do find the release of VA quality report cards in 2008 are associated with significant effects on VA enrollments among working age male veterans. And I don't find any effects on labor supply or self-reported health. And uh, information disclosed in later years doesn't have to uh, add to veterans' behavior responses. Limitations, we've covered a lot of this already. First of all, I don't have direct measures of quality improvement efforts. Now, I've tried to um, visualize the quality scores, but I run into the same issue that I noted earlier, which is I'm unable to differentiate if this is because uh, the quality scores just matter, just differ across different categories, or is it actually quality improvements. But I really like the idea of taking the differences and see how that helps. Um, I also want to know that there's a recent working paper out there that looks at the same policy intervention, but looks at that utilizes administrative data uh, employment of healthcare uh, workers at VA facilities. So it's still a work in progress to be presented at APAM. What they noted in the abstract is that the overall composite scores are not correlated with any changes, any significant changes in terms of the number of employment that VA facility um, hires. But I hope I will have a better way to defend some of your questions once we see this paper out there. The other thing is my um, um, identification is pretty much a diff in diff setup, which is valid under the assumption that the veterans do not have systematically different way of obtaining private information. Now again, that's something that I cannot test directly. What I have done is to add MSA specific trends and the magnitude of effects are pretty robust to that. So, Policy implications would be that quality information are going to be an important determinant in the public health insurance sector. And it seems that, at least from what I'm obtaining, the effects are going to be long lasting. That's all of it. Do I have any other questions in the remaining, I suppose, two minutes? Can you use the American Community Survey for any of for, for, for any of this? Just thinking about the number of observations per MSA that yeah. you've uh, over No, over because the, they don't provide a nice uh, health insurance coverage status before just on I see. What are the thought um, in terms of your main specification? Like you have so this the outpatient the score um, interacting with post. Um, I wonder if you've played around at all with kind of non-parametric 
transformations, like saying like if you're on the the, the in the highest twenty fifth percentile, and then just use an indicator for that, interacting with posts versus you know the fiftieth mm -hmm. to the twenty fifth percentile, you know something like that. So you could get some bins along there and see if this is because like, I suspect, and partly through what Colin was saying that. This fire hose of information that people are getting is probably largely going to be at the ones that are right. the highest performing, right? So right. rather than force it to be kind of this linear sure. interactive relationship, it'd be really interesting to see if you have all the effect on the highest performing ones and almost nothing on the others, or you know, kind of what that that relationship looks like. Over yeah. The, so over I've the put some thoughts in that before. I've tried to use high quality versus low quality, mm -hmm. defined based on the medium. Um, my concern with that is I get similar patterns, but I run into some sort of power issue. So I do want to use as much variation as possible. But I think I should go back and try to cut small things to see if it makes a difference. Yeah, be sure. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for the nice comments and suggestions. Thank and critics, to some extent. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, next week we have uh, David Newmark coming, so I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. Thank you.